2024 predictions. In today's video, we're gonna cover off kind of five predictions that I've got for 2024, and I guess give you a bit of context and insight what I think might coming. So guys, if you're new to the channel, my name's Julian, I'm the head of strategy here at Ripe House, and we're gonna be going through what are the predictions, what are we kind of anticipating for 2024? It's been a uh, bit of a crazy year in 2023 where you know, we had unprecedented rate hikes and though all the doom and gloom regarding property and prices, we're actually sitting now at all time highs in property prices and nearly across all sectors across the country. So the demand still stayed really high. Supply was really low and property prices stayed resilient through that period. And I don't really see that changing too much in 2024, but we want to kind of touch into that. And my first prediction is that WA and Queensland are going to continue to shine. Those two states in particular, they're very attractive from affordability in terms of income versus the median house price. Those two states are quite attractive in comparison to places like Sydney, Melbourne, even Hobart and Canberra. Um, they're also offering attractive yields. So, you know, in high investment times, investors are looking to, sorry, high interest rate times, I should say, investors are looking to cover their cost base. So we've got strong yields in those markets. Rental prices are still increasing. We're seeing stability in terms of the rate hikes. Haven't really seen anybody now, Don't not really flagging that more will come along the way. So anticipating that WA and Queensland will start to uh, to shine from for the rest of 2024. We're also seeing talks of rate cuts, potentially that may not come this year. It may come towards the back end of the year or early 2025, but regardless if they do or they do not come, we're already seeing consumer confidence come from, invest <coughs> excuse me, from investors. Regardless if they do or do not come, we're seeing increasing confidence from investors and home buyers of the like. And that is off the back of we're seeing some stability come through in those rates. Now, some leading economists have already come out and said that potentially we will not see rate cuts as early as initially predicted because the stage three uh, tax cuts that are coming in from effect from July, they are going to be the equivalent of about half a percent of rate cut. There's going to be far more Australians impacted from the rate cuts with the new changes. So that will filter down to seeing essentially half a percent of a rate cut. So it may put the brakes on it coming through with multiple cuts in 2020, uh, 2024. I think it'll still see consumer confidence continue to come through. We don't need rate cuts to push property prices along. Consumer confidence will continue to grow. Um, but what we are going to see is climbing unemployment rates. We're already seeing that come through in the numbers and I don't see that slowing down really at all because one of the things that really hurts big business is when it's quite expensive to borrow money, uh, particularly from building and construction, but even other sectors. If, if is it expensive to borrow money, even from private equity level, it is hard for them to lay down capital expenditure and make their businesses grow. They go through consolidation phases and we're already seeing that consumer confidence on the retail side. We've already had reports that for December, retail spend was down versus what was anticipated. And we're seeing kind of pullback job cuts in the retail sector. We're even seeing tech starting to, I mean, you read the news, there's lots of job cuts happening around. I think that's going to continue to happen. We might, it might not reflect truly in terms of we're seeing more full-timers go down to part-time, part-timers go down to casual. I would not be surprised if we get to the back end of the year and we're in the mid to high fours in terms of unemployment rates. That could be something that kind of exacerbates the speed of which we need those rate cuts. But that employment rate is going to continue to come down. Um, so that could, again, put a bit more of a strain on the cost of living. I think Melbourne and Sydney are going to start to firm towards the back end of the year. And I guess my prediction on that is based off the fact we are, have seen those markets kind of lag behind Queensland and they've lagged behind Perth in terms of their rental price growth because they came from a low base in COVID. They got went backwards while those other states moved forward. But we have seen migration come back. We've seen international students come back into the market. Vacancy rates in Melbourne and Sydney have really compressed. And I'm a big believer 
that when it comes to, to basically anything in life, there is value and then there is perceived value. And don't get it wrong that if we continue to see WA and Queensland move forward, there are investors who may have bought in those markets in 2019, 2020, 2021, and they're sitting there with their asset. Maybe it's doubled in value in that time or gone up 50% or more. And they're thinking, hey, I think this property here has reached the peak of its value but I'm looking at these markets, these major capital cities here across the country, and, and I think there's fantastic value to be had despite the yield. And if rate cuts do come down, that can lead to investors willing to absorb those lower yields. And I wouldn't be surprised if in the back end of 2024, or at least the start of 2025, we start to see those two major capitals start to come back into the play. And then finally, I actually see a bit of a rental growth slowdown. So we've had double digit rental growth across the country. I think we will still get there this year, but not in all markets. But investors are not smashing the door down wanting to jack you know, their rents up for their tenants. They are looking to cover their cost base in most cases. As a, as a landlord myself, you know, I would much rather keep a quality tenant in place than as opposed to going the market and chasing a new one just for an extra 20, 30, 40, $50 per week, not to mention advertising costs. So in most cases, landlords would prefer to keep their tenants in place. And that is a little bit reflective of what you'll see in rent prices. So if, if we do not get more rate increases from here, or if we do get our rate cut, you know, the cost base for investors to cover their costs, though demand and supply are, are greatly imbalanced towards the demand side, I don't think you're going to see it quite as strongly because investors at the moment are just trying to cover their losses and hedge their bets, but you will start to see that slow down a little bit. It will come more towards the back end, but that would not surprise me. And uh, that will not put a slowdown on the capital growth aspect because there's just no supply out there. But again, one to watch for 2024. I would love to know your thoughts on what's coming in 2024. Leave your comments below. If you haven't already, make sure you smash that like button and hit the subscribe. Looking forward to catching you on the next video. Bye for now.